This week we continue with our consideration of the fifth chapter of James. In verses 7 through 11, the author addresses two things, patience in suffering and honesty in all things. First he writes, Be patient therefore, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient over it until it receives the early and the late rain. So often when suffering or struggles come, we simply pray for them to be over and done with immediately, if not sooner. And that's both natural and understandable. Uh, No one courts suffering or enjoys going through it. And yet, James says that sometimes our hardships and tough times are, in fact, seasons that eventually bear a rich harvest. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient over it. He doesn't just plant seeds one day and pick vegetables the next. Instead, he has to do the hard work of tending and weeding and watering, working in the hot sun, suffering through the hours of labor. But in time, because of all that, there are crops to be reaped and vegetables to be sold and food to be eaten. The truth is, sometimes suffering teaches us lessons about ourselves and our own inner strength, about our neighbors and their wealth of compassion, and about our God and his unfailing presence. Lessons that we could not learn in any other way. Remember the old poem, I walked a mile with gladness, he chattered all the way, but I was none the wiser for all he had to say. I walked a mile with sadness and not a word said she, but oh, the things I learned that day when sadness walked with me. Be patient when the tough times come. God will be with you, navigating you through the deep waters. And in the meantime, you may learn valuable lessons that could have been learned in no other way. Second, James writes that honesty really is the best policy, and integrity really is the best compliment anyone could pay us. Do not swear either by heaven or earth, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, he writes. In other words, live in such fashion that when you tell someone something, it never occurs to them to wonder if it's true. That verse is what led Quakers to resist taking an oath of honesty before testifying in a court of law. They said, if we have to promise not to lie for the next few minutes, how do you know we aren't lying about that? As Quakers, you can count on our always telling the truth. Therefore, an oath to do so is redundant. Makes sense. Do not swear either by heaven or earth, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. A dad I know talking to me about his son said to me recently, I absolutely trust that young man. I may not always agree with him, but I never have to wonder if what he tells me is true. There aren't many better compliments than that. To be trustworthy is a sign of spiritual depth and maturity. Okay, consider these two questions. First, what lessons have you learned from the difficult experiences in your life? Second, Why do you think honesty is the best policy? Are there areas where that is more important, less important? Explain your answers. I'll see you next week.